Hey, um, I'm so excited um, to be able to talk to you this week about Miriam. Um, I'm so sorry that I'm just now getting this video out. Um, as I mentioned in my post, it has been one of those weeks and I know we've all had those, um, but um, I wanted to make sure to have plenty of time to uh, not rush this and give you guys something that I've, I've really kind of felt um, was from God this week. Um, as uh, I was, when we kind of decided who we were going to kind of pick for our week, I was excited to have Miriam. Um, when we were, when I was younger, when I was in college, I did this Bible study before, and I always thought it was so cool that uh, Miriam, it is mentioned that she led the women through dancing and singing, and it's really the first time that dancing, I think, was kind of mentioned in the Bible. Um, and so I thought that that was really exciting, and I was just, just so excited to to talk about that today because I think it's important to remember that there are times in our life where we are brought out of difficult and horrible situations like the Israelites were. They were in bondage and slavery and a life of misery and pain and cruelty and God uh, redeemed them and brought them out of that. Um, and in that moment of um, freedom, uh, and after the walls of the Red Sea came crashing down on the Egyptians, Miriam led the women um, in a song of praise to the God Almighty because he saved them and he, and he took care of them. And so I thought that that was really cool and I was excited to talk about that today. And so, um, and I wanted to talk about that, but then it's funny how um, God kind of changes, changes things for you because I had forgotten the other part of the story about Miriam, which has been a gut punch for me. And it's been one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, this is what we really need to talk about. Um, so, uh, as we know from last week, we know that Miriam was a wonderful sister. She took care of her little brother. Um, and she was, uh, led by God and God took care of her and used her in different situations throughout her life. Likely she was a mother and a wife. It's not mentioned, but we can assume that she was. And then uh, last but certainly not least, she was a prophet and she was labeled as like the first female prophet in the Bible. And we know that she led the women um, through um, a leadership role. Um, now, I think... Um, it's, it's, it's interesting how when the further you get away from a pivotal moment in your life that you forget the, the, the pain and things that you've gone through. And we're at that point with the, with the Israelites. They were complaining. They were irritable. They were grumpy. Um, and they were thinking that they had life better in Egypt. <laughs> when we had small, we still have small children, but when we had babies, people always tell my husband, you're going to forget this. You're going to not remember these, these hard days. And Josh promptly always would say, I will remember this all the time, every day. And it's true. He has. Um, however, um, this is not the case for the Israelites. Um, Fast, fast forward, we know that Miriam is in a leadership role along with Aaron and Moses. It talks about how Moses is very humble. Um, we know from past scriptures that Moses had a stuttering problem and he was he wondered why God would use him. Um, and he was very humble. And the Bible um, talks about how um, God trusted him uh, to a different level. Not that he didn't use uh, Miriam and Aaron, but it was it was different. He had him in a, a different level of authority than the other two. Um, this comes the part of the story where Miriam and Aaron start letting pride and arrogance creep into their life. Um, they said while they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. What did she have to do with it? They said, he has spoken only through Moses, or has the Lord only spoken through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? Hold on. So that is where pride has crept in. And they think that just because they are at this level of authority, that they need to be here, that they can do it better. 
you know, isn't it, isn't it interesting how this is the mentality of our life? I and mean, we were taught this as a young child through that little song, anything you can do, I can do better. Um, and I think that this is where they were. The Lord immediately heard them and got extremely angry and completely like shut her down and Aaron. Um, it says, so immediately the Lord called to Moses and Aaron, um, Miriam and said, go out to the tabernacle, all three of you. So they went out to the tabernacle. It says, Aaron and Miriam, he called, and they stepped forward. And the Lord said to them, Now listen to what I say. If I were prophets among you, I, the Lord, would reveal myself in visions, and I would speak to them in dreams, but not with my servant Moses. Of all of my house, he is the one that I trust. I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is, so why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? So he was like, this is who I put in charge. This is my plan. I am the one doing this. Immediately after that, it said that the Lord was very angry with him and he left. Mic drop. And as the cloud moved from the tabernacle, there stood Miriam and her skin was white as snow from leprosy. Well, Aaron was so upset by this and asked for forgiveness and he he begged the Lord or he begged Moses to um, have, you know, the Lord take care of Miriam. And so Moses cried out to God and she, as part of the law, when you have leprosy, you had to be separated and set apart from the rest of the tribe. And so she had set apart during that time for seven days and then she was healed and was able to re-enter the camp. I think it's important to remember humility um, in all aspects of our life, um, whether it's through um, our our positions at work, um, our positions through church, just our positions in life. Um, and First Peter five six says, "Humble yourselves under the almighty power of God, and the right time He will lift you up in honor." So they're trying to lift themselves up in honor in this moment. They're trying to say, doesn't, doesn't God speak through me? Don't I lead a small group? Don't I do a ministry? Um, don't I do this? Don't I do that? Why am I just here? But it says, humble yourselves under the almighty power of God. God will, at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Um... I think too, not only the humility aspect of it, we need to look at the, the portion of this where God takes the time to discipline his children. I know all about disciplining my children because they are hellions. Um, and if I didn't discipline my children, number one, my house would burn down. That's just the truth. But it's about, it's about disciplining them because I love them and I want them to make the right choices and I want them to have the right path. In Deuteronomy 8, 5, it says, just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord disciplines you for your own good. And I think that's important to remember that she could have sat and, and, and just let that define her life. But she was later on mentioned in Micah as one of the prophets of God. So yes, People get it wrong sometimes, but God loves you enough to discipline you, to correct you so that you can be set on the right path. And this is for your own good. Um, that's been, you know, pretty interesting to me because I had just completely blocked that whole portion of the story out. And I was just only thinking about her um, dancing and praising God. Well, that is so important to remember to... Um, praise God and to worship God for his power and his goodness and his deliverance through those times in our life that are so difficult. It's also equally as important to remember his power and he is the God Almighty and he has a plan and he is there for you. Um, and he puts people in charge or whatever it is he does it is for it's his plan and for his glory um and so i think it's important to remember that and i think it's important to remember humility and to know that um we are not to be prideful and arrogant about anything um, and i think that pride is such a 
um, a thing that kind of creeps in and, and can really destroy you from the inside out. And then moving forward about discipline, that he's not doing that to be a mean, mean God. He's doing that for your own good. Um, I have just really in, enjoyed this study on Miriam, and I'm so excited about all the other women that we're going to learn about this week, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful Halloween weekend. Um, going to be so much fun, and um, yeah, have a great day. Bye.